in the gems verses, verse 6, that's the one that we're going to focus on, but I'm going to start reading at verse 1. It says, my little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And by this we know that we have come to know him, if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. So, we walk as Jesus walked, and the reason why we walk as Jesus walked, as Christians, is because He has saved us. We don't walk as He walked to earn that salvation, we walk as He walked because we have that salvation already. So a few things to say from the beginning here, we are saved from our sins only by God's grace in Jesus Christ. That's the reason why we are saved. That's how we can know God. That's how we can pray to Him. is because of Jesus Christ. And the grace that we have in Him, it's not by something that we can earn. Grace is a gift for us. It says in Titus 3, 5-7, through it says, He saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that by being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. So not by anything we have done, but by Jesus Christ. In Romans 3, 23 and 24, it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So this grace is a gift to us, and the reason why we walk as Jesus walked is because we have that. So fellowship with God is not earned, but a gift. God gives that to us. We can't earn love. Love is given to us. That's true in human relationships, and that's also true of God, too. Love is given to us. So it says in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Father adopts us. We, we are not the natural children of God. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He's the natural child of God. But believers, we are adopted as children of God. And so we can call God our Father. And this is because... He showed His love to us and bought us with the precious blood of Christ like we just sang about. And we receive this gift by faith or believing. Faith and belief are essentially the same thing. We believe that there is God. We believe that Jesus Christ came and we believe that He came to save us. And we put our trust in Him in that way. And because of that, because we believe This is how we receive this gift. We put our trust in the Lord. Now when John wrote this letter, this is a letter that John wrote to other Christians. When John was writing this, there were people who were saying, I believe in Jesus, but then they would go and do whatever they wanted to. They would live just however they wanted to. They would act however they would want. They would say whatever they want. And it didn't matter how they lived, so they thought. So there would be people who said, yeah, I believe in Jesus, but then they wouldn't act like it. It sounded like from what we can tell in this letter that they, they loved the world and that they hated people even. And so John writes this letter to, to try to set them straight a little bit. A big point in First John, this whole letter, if you read the whole thing, which I encourage you to do, a big point here is that salvation and faith and godly living all go together. You can't just have one without the other. Being saved and believing 
and living a godly life, those go together. So receiving salvation results in righteous living and especially love for fellow believers. That's something that John talks about a lot, that we have to love one another, particularly the family of believers that we belong to. We have to, we have to love one another. That's very important. John isn't the only one who talks about this. This is also in other parts of the Bible. James 2.26 This is your Bible reading track today. For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. It's it's useless. It's not there. It's dead. So these things go together. Saying you're a Christian but not acting like one, that doesn't really make any sense at all. For example, there's look at this guy here. Let's say you met this guy, and he told you that he was a Wolverines fan. He says, I'm all about Michigan. I I like Michigan. They're my favorite team. Would you believe him? I don't think so. No. How about this next one here? Let's say there's this guy, and uh, he only buys red trucks, or tractors, rather. And let's say... You met this guy, and he says, I'm a John Deere guy. I'm, I'm all about the John Deeres. Would you believe him? Probably not. Or some of the adults might know this guy, this next one. This guy is Harvey Weinstein. Maybe you've heard of him in the, in the news a little bit. Well, he got in trouble and uh, for being pretty disrespectful to women in uh, to put it lightly. And one of his responses was, was this, I so respect all women and regret what happened. I hope that my actions will speak louder than words. Yeah. Do you believe him? No. Absolutely not. So, if you call yourself a Christian, you must walk as Jesus walked. If you say that you're a Christian, then that's got to show. People look at how you act more than they listen to what you say. We all know this. Actions speak louder than words. You've heard that before. That's very true. If you say that you're a Christian, then you have to walk as Jesus walked. That means, for example, that we have to turn away from sin. We have to not do what God says is is bad to do. So in 1 John 3, it says this, Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that He, Jesus, appeared to take away sins, and in Him there is no sin. And it says, No one who abides in Him keeps on sinning. So if we say that we're a Christian and then just live lives that are full of sin all the time then what good is that? It's like we're talking on both sides of our mouth. Look at the, look at the screen here and let's answer this together. The second part is on the next slide. We have been delivered from our misery by God's grace alone through Christ and not because we have earned it. Why then must we still do good? To be sure, Christ has redeemed us by His blood. But we do good because Christ, by His Spirit, is also renewing us to be like Himself, so that in all our living, we may show that we are thankful to God for all He has done for us, and so that He may be praised through us. And we do good so that we may be assured of our faith by its fruits, and so that by our godly living, our neighbors may be won over to Christ. So we are saved by grace, through faith, not because we've earned it, but we do good so that God would be praised through us and so that other people would see how wonderful Christ is and that they would want to follow Him too. So if you believe... If you believe this, if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, then His way of life must be the best way. 
If Jesus is the Son of God, if you believe that, then automatically, his way of life, how he chose to live, that's got to be the best way. Because we, we start when we were, were created in the womb, when we're born and everything, and we don't remember anything back then, but Christ, Jesus, he was existing before the world began. In fact, it says in the Bible that he helped put everything together. So if there's anybody who would know what it means to live a good life on this earth, it would be him, the one who helped make everything and helped make all of us, for that matter. He would know how to live life better than anybody else because he helped make life. And says... In John 13, verse 15, Jesus said this, For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. He said that right after he washed his disciples' feet. And then Matthew 10, 24, A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. And so... We need to be like our master or Lord, Jesus Christ. And he is our teacher, and so we are his disciple. We need to be like him in how we live and how we act. So we are to walk as Jesus walked. And when you think about how Jesus walked, there's at least seven things that I want to point out to you today about what Jesus' life was like. How do we walk like that. So let's just look at some, a few things here about what Jesus' life was like. A few distinctives. So number one, he did what God the Father wanted no matter what anyone thought. People always have a lot of opinions about how we live or what we should do, you know. Sometimes they tell us and sometimes they just scowl, you know. Well, Jesus had that too. He had a lot of people telling him, you know, you need to do this. You know, one time his brother says, hey, if you, if you want to be a religious leader, you not need to get out there. You get out in the open and, and show yourself and everything. And he said, no, that, that's not the right time yet. It's not the right time for me. So Jesus, he even obeyed his parents. He was the creator of all things, and he existed before all things, and he had parents that he had to obey. Now, think about, think about that. If you, if you were Jesus and you had made all things, you would know more than your parents would. And you would be able to say, hey, mom and dad, you know what? I know more than you. And so, you know what? I'm just going to do whatever I want. I don't have to listen to you because I'm, I'm the Lord of heaven and earth. I'm the king of kings. So, you know what? I'm just going to listen to myself and you can just take a hike. Now, there's some kids who say that to their parents, but Jesus is the only one who could have legitimately said that to his parents. Right? He was the only one who could have actually said that and had some reason to say that. But he didn't. It says he obeyed his parents. He obeyed his parents. So, as Christians, we obey God no matter what others think. So I remember when I was a kid, there were things that my parents said I couldn't do. And all my other friends, they were allowed to do them. Their parents said that they could do these things. You know, like stay out past 8 o'clock and that kind of thing. And I, I was, I was kind of, I was kind of bummed. And, and they said, well, why, why, why do you have to obey your parents? Come on. I mean, our parents say it's okay, so it's got to be okay. And it was hard to obey, obey my parents when all the other kids were doing what their parents said was okay. But we need to obey God even when other people think that we're weird. We need to obey our parents even when other kids think we're weird. 
So that's just one example. He, we, we have to do what God wants us to do. God wants us to obey our parents, because even Jesus obeyed his parents. Number two, Jesus helped as many people as he could. He helped as many people as he could. He, he was, he's somebody who had, had some special powers. We know about that. He healed people. And there were all kinds of people that were brought to him. And he healed all of them. It says in Matthew 4, 23 and 24, it says, And he went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. It says his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought him all the sick, those afflicted with diseases and pains, those oppressed by demons, epileptics, and paralytics, and he healed them. So all kinds of people were brought to him. He healed them all. Now, we may not have special powers of healing like he did, but we can still help people. There's a lot of people who need help in this world. And we have ways in which we can help them. So Christians, we help anyone in need. Christians don't say, well, you don't look like me, or you don't think like me, so I don't have to help you. Christians will help anybody who's in need. We need to especially help fellow believers because if, if I'm a believer and you're a believer... That means we're brother and sisters in Christ. It means we're, we're not just two people who know each other. We're, we're family. If God is my father and God is your father, that means we are both children of God. That means we are family. And family always has your highest priority. So when you're a part of the family of believers, this is your highest priority. We need to especially help the family of believers. First John talks about that a lot. We have to love one another. So we help anyone in need, especially people who are part of the family of Christ. Number three, he sought out society's rejected people. The people that everybody else didn't like. So he hung out with people who were just mean, people who took advantage of other people, like tax collectors, people who basically stole money from people. And he even helped out people who were so sick and ugly and nasty. They were called lepers. They had these nasty skin diseases. And it says he went out to them. It says he even touched them. Most people would want to stay as far away from lepers as possible because they thought, I don't want that disease. Not to mention you're really disgusting. But Jesus didn't see that. Even with people who looked disgusting, he went to them. It didn't bother him. And so we as Christians, walking in Jesus' steps, we need to associate with the unpopular and the weird. We need to be able to hang out with people who other people say are weird or other people who others don't want to hang out with. Unpopular people and weird people. Jesus hung out with anybody. He could hang out with anybody. And there were some people that he, he spent more time with than others, just like, just like we do, but he was not above hanging out with anybody. It says in Romans 12, don't be haughty. That means, you know, kind of putting your nose in the air. Don't be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. So we have to be able to associate with everybody. So when you're out and about and you see other people, don't see losers, weirdos, nerds, popular, unpopular. Don't see people like that. See human beings. People who need the Lord. People who have hopes and dreams and hurts and desires. People just like you. So Jesus hung out with anybody. Another thing that he did is he stood up to bullies. He stood up to bullies. 
in Luke 13, 14 through 16, he was at this, this church, they called them synagogues, and there was a ruler of the synagogue there who was upset that Jesus healed on the Sabbath. And so this ruler said, there are six days in which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be healed, not on the Sabbath day. And so Jesus answered, you hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to water it? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound for 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? Why shouldn't she be healed? If you're going to feed your animals on Saturday, on Sunday, why shouldn't this woman be healed? Another time, Jesus was at Bethany at somebody's house, and there was a woman who came up to him to anoint his feet. And it was some pretty expensive perfume. And when the disciples saw it, they were upset. And they said, why this waste? This could have been sold and the money given to the poor. And so Jesus said, well, why do you bother this woman? She's done a beautiful thing for me. He said later, truly I say to you, wherever this gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Jesus stood up to bullies. So Christians stand up for those who are mistreated. We have to stand up for people who are mistreated, especially people who can't stand up for themselves. There are some people in this world who can't talk. They can't stand up for themselves. They have no way of defending themselves. We need to especially stand up for those people. So pay attention when people are being mistreated and do something about it because Jesus did. Number five, he never got anyone back for anything. He never got revenge. There were a lot of people who did mean things to him and he never got anybody back. There was one time in Luke 9, 51 through 56, where he was going to travel through this town. And it was a place in Samaria. And Samaritans didn't like Jews, and Jesus was a Jew. So he was going to travel through this town. And he was going to stay the night there because it was getting dark. And they said, No, we don't want you here. We don't like you. You can't stay here. And all his disciples that were with him. They said, Lord, should we call fire from heaven down to devour these people? Because they were so mean. Do you think Jesus said, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's burn them all. No. He, it says he rebuked them. He said, hey, don't. No, we're not doing anything like that at all. He never got anybody back. When he was arrested... He didn't do anything wrong, but he was arrested. And he, it says he could have called down legions of angels to defend him. And he didn't. So, Christians, people who follow Jesus, they love their enemies. They're good to people who are mean. Even mean to them. That's really hard. But that's what Jesus did. Jesus actually said this, I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. We need to not get people back, not to take revenge. When people say something mean to us, we don't say something mean back to them. That's what we'd like to do, but that's not what Jesus does. Number six, he told the truth at any cost. Sometimes the truth means that we'll get in trouble or people won't like us. That happened with Jesus too. There were times when he had to tell the truth and people didn't like him because of it. So one time he was telling, talking to these people and he says, your father Abraham, he rejoiced 
at the thought that he would see my day, and he saw it, and he was glad. And they said to him, you are not yet 50 years old, and you have seen Abraham? And he says to you, said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. In other words, I'm, I'm actually God. I was there. And it says they picked up stones to stone him because of that. He told them the truth, and they picked up stones to stone him. But he told the truth anyways. When he was arrested and he was put on trial, the chief priest went up and got right in his face and he says, I charge you by oath by the living God, tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus knew that if he said yes, that he would be condemned to death. If he would have said no, they might have let him go. He might have been okay. But the truth was, is what he said. Yes, it is as you say. He says, I am the Christ, the Son of God. Because he actually was. He told the truth. And they condemned him to death because of it. So Christians speak only the truth and only in love. It says in the Bible that we need to speak the truth and speak it with love. Love means that we care about the other people, other person, and we want what's best for them. So for example, we don't spread rumors. That's easy to do. Just because somebody said it doesn't mean that we need to repeat it. Just because somebody shared something doesn't mean we need to share it too. And sometimes, sometimes the truth hurts. Sometimes the truth hurts us. And we need to be honest. Even if we're going to get in trouble, even if we did something bad, we need to tell the truth about it. And if we get in trouble about it, that's okay. Jesus got in trouble for telling the truth too. When we have to tell somebody a truth that they might not like, something that might make them not like us anymore, we still tell it, but we tell it gently and kindly, as kindly as we can, because we still care about them. But we have to be honest with people. If we're not honest with people, we don't care about them. Jesus was always honest with people because he always cared about them. Number seven. <clears throat> Last one. He gave his whole life so others would be saved. That was his whole life. That's all that he did. He gave his whole life and he died. But even while he was alive, his whole life was all about other people being saved. That was his whole mission in life. That's everything that he did. So, in Ephesians 5, it says this. It says, Be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us, and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. It says, Christ gave himself for us. Not just at the end when he died on the cross. He gave his whole life for us. So he was living a righteous life. He was teaching people. He was helping us understand who God is. In the song that you guys, or that we sang before, it says he came to live, live a perfect life, and he came to die so that we'd be reconciled. He gave his whole life so that we would be saved. And so, Christians give their lives so others would know Christ. So that's, that's what our life needs to be about. We need to be living like Christ lives so that other people can know who Christ is. He's the best thing that's happened to us. And the last thing that he said in Matthew was this, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus gave his whole life so that we would be saved and we need to give our lives so that others would be able to be saved by knowing him too. Let's bow our heads and let's pray together. Lord our God in heaven, we are so glad that Jesus came to this world so that we would be saved, that he gave his whole life for us 
So Lord, since he knows what it's like to live the best life, we pray that we would follow in his steps and follow his example. And Lord, that we would believe and that he would be Lord of our lives. So help each of us to do that by the power of your Holy Spirit because of what you have done for us. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.